As a movement, atheism is often criticized for being overwhelmingly white and male. Now, as we learned from a study a couple weeks ago, part of the problem is that women and minorities are significantly more likely to think that they have to hide their disbelief. But a lot of the problem isn't that too. And that's why it's so important that in addition to looking at the atheist experience, we look at the female atheist experience, the Hispanic atheist experience, the trans atheist experience, etc. And as a longtime advocate of doing exactly that, I want to applaud American atheists for the recently released survey on non-religious women. It's a 23-page document that's available for free online. We'll have it linked in the show notes. And it parses the data from the big secular survey they did a couple years back to look specifically at the issues that face women in atheism. It's a really interesting read. Among their findings was a much higher instance of loneliness and depression, higher levels of discrimination, and as I already mentioned, they're way more likely to conceal their religious identity. Now, obviously, I don't have time to go over the entire survey, but it's worth reading. It even has a pretty extensive section on ways to help bring more women into atheism and more atheist women into activism, which we really need. And regardless of what does or doesn't come from it, I think American atheists need some kudos for helping to fill the data gap and show us where we could be doing better. Of course, if you want to feel better about the many ways the atheist community fails women, you could always take the briefest of glances at the other side and see how much better we're doing. Take, for example, Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina, Mark Robinson. Yeah, no, the ultra-Christian who called transgendered people filth and demonic and repeatedly claimed that straight couples are superior to gay ones. Yeah, well, to nobody's surprise, he's also a huge misogynist who talks on and on about the sanctity of life when it comes time to legislate women's bodies. Mm, Not so much, though, when it affects him personally. See, we learned this week that back in 1989, Mr. Sanctity of Life paid for an abortion. Well, to be fair, the sourcing on it is a little sketchy because we learned it from him. Somebody went digging through his old Facebook post and found a conversation about abortion from back in 2012 where he freely admitted it. Of course, nobody in the North Carolina GOP wants to comment on it because what the fuck would they say? But even their excuse not to talk about it betrays a lot. They're saying it would be inappropriate to comment on someone else's personal medical choices. So, you know, okay to legislate on, but not to comment on. See, that's the thing about these assholes. Even when they eventually get it right, they manage to get it wrong. That's the case in our last story this week as well. Now, we haven't talked a hell of a lot about the Brian Houston thing, but suffice it to say he's a mega preacher that got ousted from his church after years of complaints of sexual misconduct around women. Well, on Friday, the church released a statement admitting that there were even more accusations than we knew about, and then they tried to blame his behavior on his sleeping pills. Because you know how some medications have the little label that says, send unsolicited sex-based texts to your employees as a side effect? Yeah, it's like that. Anyway, the point is, as the atheist community strives to be ever more welcoming and understanding of women and their unique issues, the other guys are doing whatever the opposite of that is. And on that lovely reminder, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 